Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. I spoke with author Steve Gorham about his new book, Outside the Green Box, Rethinking Sustainable Development. One thing surprised me, despite our world of advanced technology, Steve said this. Well, we live in a world of superstition today. We really do. We, uh, <laughs> uh, we just, uh, eight days ago, we had uh, people marching in Washington and in Toronto and around uh, the world uh, uh, in support of fighting climate change. Um, and these people believe that uh, uh, we can drive electric cars and make the storms less severe. I mean, things that, uh, you know, if you didn't have the background, you'd say, what? Is that, is that really the case? And it turns out it isn't the case. Um, the world jumped to a conclusion at the end of the 1980s uh, when Dr. James Hansen of NASA came before Congress and testified he was 99% sure that the Earth was warming and humans were causing it. Uh, within uh, that very same year, the United Nations set up the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And in 1992, 40-some nations and the European Union signed a treaty, the Framework Convention on Climate Change, saying they would re reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And for the last 25 years, nations have been arguing about when and how much to reduce those emissions. But more and more data shows that global temperatures are doing their own thing, that the climate models are wrong. So we have, we jumped to conclusion on the issue and, and uh, our society uh, is moving like a big tanker, very hard to turn around. Uh, it's gonna take a long, long time for uh, the crowd to come back to their senses. Surely a world of superstition should be, could be, debated and debunked at institutions of higher learning. Uh, universities uh, are very reluctant to even entertain the idea. I get turned out about 10 to 1 when I pursue a, a debate at, at a university. Uh, they don't even want to debate uh, uh, the science of man-made warming. Um, when I talk to businesses, I find that most business groups think that, yeah, you're preaching to the choir. Um, uh, we don't believe that the current energy and climate laws make sense, um, but we do have headlines of uh, companies like Apple and Google, big name firms that are all in for, for uh, uh, being sustainable. But now we have, as, as I, uh, sometimes I go to the University of Chicago near my home and um, I go uh, attend some of their lectures. I say, I love the speakers you bring in, but they're very one-sided. <laughs> But I say to them, we now have uh, arguably the majority of the United States Congress this, that does not believe humans are causing dangerous global warming. We have the Trump administration doing 180 degrees on all of our uh, climate and energy laws, or many of them. Isn't it time for debate at the University of Chicago? No, no, we won't want to debate that, is what they tell me. So it's, uh, it really is a, a strange situation. With all the recent headlines around the world revealing that climate models their computer simulations, have been over-exaggerating warming for nearly three decades. Maybe there is some hope. There are many leading indicators that show that uh, the theory of man-made warming is, is very shaky. Um, uh, you can look at um, uh, the value of global car carbon credit trading, which peaked in 2011, is now plun uh, plunging. Uh, global investment in renewables went up 30% a year until 2011. It's been flat uh, for the last six years, and Europe has declined 50%. Um, we have uh, many climate scientists now that are saying that uh, we're possibly entering a period of cooling because of lower solar activity, uh, because uh, the big ocean currents, uh, uh, ocean temperature cycles, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation, are moving into cool phases. And if that occurs, the planet temperatures will be flat to cooling and all these climate models will be way up here. So they're, go they're gonna get farther and farther from reality. So the good news is, I think uh, nations and leaders will eventually come to their senses and we'll get back to uh, common, sense, uh, common sense energy and, and environmental policies. Well, I think Friends of Science does a great job and I want you to keep up your work. Nice to hear. You can help. Join our club. Become a member of Friends of Science. Donate. Help us bring common sense and sound cost-benefit analysis back to public policy on climate change. For Friends of Science, I'm Michelle Sterling.